So we are we are going to talk about digital memory next. Uh, we are going to take a look at RAM, ROM. Uh, how do we make a, a, a RAM cell? How do we um, understand what is stored in a ROM? We will take a look at how do you uh, figure out the size of the memory? Uh, so that's what the next topic is about. The big picture, what have we been talking about so far? We started with the Boolean algebra. We then looked at simple and then more complicated combinational circuits. The list was pretty big, right? Like they were uh, multiplexers, decoders, encoders, adders, comparators. So, so we, we looked at uh, a lot of those combinational circuits. And then we moved on into uh, latches, flip-flops, registers, counters. And then we have been looking at finite state machines. Now, if you think about a real computer, the big picture, we need to do uh, a few things. One, the ability to store data. That's where your memory comes in. The ability to transform data. What would we need to transform? So let me highlight this word here. Can you guys tell me which thing from this set of um, things that we have covered is can be useful to transform data? FSM can... FSM is more like control everything, um, but transforming data is the combinational, right? Right, combinational, right? You could do that with even the sequential circuits, but if I were to choose one thing that is allowing me to transform data, I would probably pick combinational. Because sequential elements are more for like the storing bit. Um, and the memory that we look at is also for the storing bit. Uh, Arham says uh, CD-ROM mean memory. Yeah, that is uh, the same. Read-only memory, ROM. Yes. And then we need something to control. Every oh, hold, hold on. Things to move data. What do we? Wh what did we learn that could move data between things? You guys remember what did we learn about the um, D flip flops? Okay, so this is more like buses and ramps, right? So to move things, we need like buses, maybe even like wires. For storage, we can look at RAM. ROM for transform we talked about that being like the combinational part and lastly to control everything we need a control unit in a computer and the control unit is a finite state machine going from one state to the next state oh uh, no so if you want to move data between things, then you would need to connect them using either buses or wires, right? So the buses would be responsible for moving data. So you have things to store data, you have things to transform data, you have things to move data from one thing to the other, and the mastermind of everything, the control unit, that is for making sure everything is happening properly. We are going to be focusing here on the storing of information part. So for the storing of data, you could do that in flip-flops and registers, but you could not, it's, there's no point using flip-flops and registers to store the amount of data a typical user stores nowadays. You know, 10 years ago, uh, the the situation with memory was a l very different uh, 
uh, than what it is today, right? Um, today we talk about SSD, 512 gig gigabyte or even one terabyte SSD uh, as if it is nothing. Uh, but that was not the scene 10 years ago. Um, so using flip-flops or registers is okay if you wanted to do that for a temporary basis and for a very limited amount of uh, information. But if you wanted to do this with for a very large memory, no matter what memory it is, cache memory or RAM or even the hard disk, if you wanted to do this for large amounts of data, then you would not want flip-flops. Why, why, why use flip-flops? Because I'm not interested in setting bits. I'm not interested in resetting bits and storing bits. All I'm interested is, in is store something and retrieve something. Read and write to memory. That's it. So for that, I'm going to be using uh, RAM and they come in different types, static RAM, dynamic RAM, and we can use ROM wherever you only need to read memory and you, you're not interested in writing memory. For transforming data, we talked about that the fact that it's going to be combinational and inside a computer, it is the arithmetic or logic unit. So a, a unit that is responsible for all the arithmetic and logic operations. It's a big combinational circuit. Moving that data, like I said, it's buses, right? Uh, buses will allow you to move data from one to the other and if buses are being shared, so if, if, if multiple things are sharing the same bus, then we would need uh, a tri-state logic for those buses. Control unit, the biggest finite state machine that is invisible to the users that is responsible for all of this to happen at the correct time and in an appropriate manner. So let's go over uh, what are the things that we are going to look at? Some of these we are not going to uh, go into uh, 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 too much, but we'll certainly look at uh, static RAM uh, and dynamic RAM and ROM. So volatile RAM, what does volatile mean? Anyone? Uh, volatile means changing easily. Yes, yes, yes. But volatile RAM means that it depends on power. Essentially, when you uh, when you power off or shut down your computer, the contents of the RAM are lost. So you would need to continuously provide it with power and if you don't, then it is volatile. It, it, uh, it, it, the data is lost. But there is also non-volatile memory, which means that you can, you, it doesn't depend on power here. So for example, a read-only memory is typically uh, uh, something that even if you remove the power, uh, then the contents are not lost. Can you guys think of something in your laptops or computers uh, that should have this characteristic? Is an SSD an example of non-volatile? No, it, SSD is an example of the storage device. It is not the type of memory, right? So. SSD, there is RAM, there is also, uh, there is ROM. So if it is ROM, then it is non-volatile. But if somebody were to design SSD RAM, then it will be volatile. So it's more about the type of memory than the, the technology used to make that memory. Uh, hard drive, Evan says hard drive should not be lost. Okay, so that's one. Uh, that's something that has to be non-volatile. What is probably the most important program that you never want to get erased in your laptop? Operating system, absolutely. So the operating system is stored on a bootloader, right? So it's, it's usually stored on the part of memory that is uh, never erased 
So that is, that has to be non-volatile. Uh, is there any non-volatile memory on your basis three boards? You guys know about that? Some of you might have uh, observed it. Some of you might have noticed it. Some of you have not. Uh, instructions to hardware map. Oh, the, all of that is in the boot, right? Like all of that is in the boot. But I'm saying uh, in your basis three boards, have you guys looked at something that does not get erased with power? So on your basis three board, there is a, a ROM in which you could store like a default bit, bit file. And every time you power on your basis three board, it loads that program into the FPGA. And that is possible because there are two ways you can uh, push the bit file onto the board. One is directly program, oh yeah, th there is, you can directly program the FPGA, but there is also limited amount of ROM on your basis three board. So you could program the ROM and then every time you power on, you, you program the FPGA from the ROM. How easy would it be to program and change the program? Well, uh, exactly the same uh, amount of uh, ease as you would have to program the FPGA, right? Like there's no, no, the, the ROM cannot be erased. It is fixed. For a ROM, you give it a you give it the address, you read back data at that address. So once you make the ROM, you can change it. But for a programmable ROM, you can change change it. So there is there are various types of ROMs. Uh, you can get programmable ROMs. You can get uh, erasable and programmable ROMs. E e electrically erasable and programmable ROMs, right? That is what uh, your basis three has. I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but when, when you start programming the uh, FPGA, um, it, it gives you two options. One is to for the FPGA, the other is for the uh, electrically erasable and programmable ROM. So if you change the configuration of the ROM, every time you uh, power the board on, it loads the default program that you have programmed it with. Right. We are going to go deep deeper into the ROM con uh, conversation. All right, let's come back here. Uh, static RAM. We are, we're going to first talk about static RAM and dynamic RAM, and then we'll go into ROM. The static RAM is part of memory, which is very high speed. It is compatible with CMOS technology, which means that it understands the logic voltage levels consistent with CMOS, but it is low density because it uses six transistors to store one bit of information. Now with the size of the transistor being so, so small, it is still pretty dense, but not as dense as dynamic RAM. So dynamic RAM is high speed. It's not as high as static RAM, but it is very high density. It only needs one transistor to store one bit of information. The problem is because there is a capacitor charging and discharging process that is involved in dynamic RAM, it is not always compatible with CMOS technology. So that's a drawback for uh, dynamic RAM. The other drawback because of that capacitor is 
a refresh operation is required typically after about 64 milliseconds or so uh, but it, it really depends on uh, the size of the capacitors being used but a, a, a refresh operation will be required so if size was the criteria you would use dynamic ram but if consistency with cmos technology and speed was the criteria you would use static ram now in terms of volatile memory volatile ram you have flash memory which is very high density so on an average you use only less than one transistor per bit however it happens to be lower speed than your static ram and dynamic ram options there is also the read only memory that falls under the category of non volatile ram for the read only memory when you when you hear the the the, the words read only memory what do you think the, the inputs should be and what do you think the output should be for ROM? Let's talk about input and output. What is an input? What do you think an input is for a ROM? Read, not read. Okay, so that's a read request. What else? Location, address, memory address. Perfect. What is the output? Information add in the ROM. Add that address, right? So data add address your input is read request and address and the data is uh, and the output is data at that address thinking of if you think about those two statements can you agree that a combination logic circuit is a ROM any combinational logic circuit is a ROM that's a that's a statement I'm making do you guys agree with that or not the input is if I treat the input to the combinational logic as the address and the output of the combinational logic as the data at that address wouldn't that qualify as a ROM Think about this. This guy is a combinational circuit. Suppose it has three inputs and two outputs, right? So if I give it any input bit sequence, I get some output, uh, some outputs, right? And if I treat the inputs as address, and treat the outputs at data at that address wouldn't this combinational logic circuit qualify as a ROM there is no feedback there is no there is no uh, memory there is no the combinational circuit is fixed right you have designed it with some logic gates and you know, muxes, decoders, encoders, and whatnot, it is combinational, and you have implemented it, and every time you give it address, it gives you data at that address. The circuit itself depends on power. Well, why would it depend on power? Yeah. This is a combinational circuit, right? A, B, C, D. And this is Y. Every time you turn it on, and you turn it off, and you turn it off, no matter how many terms, times you turn off and turn on, Y will always have the same relationship with A, B, C, and D. 
right? So the data that is stored at that address, if you're, you're thinking of this as an address, and you're thinking of this as the data at that address, it's not gonna change if you even turn off the power. You are right, yep. All right, so you know what? I'm, I think I'm uh, running short of time here. We will come back to these ideas. We'll, we'll, we'll complete this uh, lecture on memory uh, in our next class. I'm gonna stop recording here.